Welcome to Cha Cha's Queendom. It's been a while. I was focusing on the kids and the family, all the remote learning, the COVID, and all that. But now I'm back. But when I was away, my Thermador stovetop broke. Okay, two of the stoves broke, and I was thinking about a kitchen remodeling. But we're not quite there yet. But I don't really want to change it right now because I would really love a eight burners, right? So, but then I can't do an eight burners. But anyways, so many things going on for me to decide whether should I change the stove top now or should we just proceed with the kitchen remodel. But there are two things that could happen. First, if if Thermador, you are listening, you could totally sponsor me. And the second thing is. You guys can please subscribe and share this video so I can hit my goal, and my husband can proceed with the kitchen remodeling, which I've been waiting for 17 years. Now let's talk about the dish that I'm gonna cook today: Cha Cha's beef stew. And this is a very special dish to me because this is the comfort food that I grew up with. And on top of that, this is the very first dish that I've ever learned to cook from my mom when I was in high school. And the flavor is amazing. It's not hard to make, and every one of my friends who've ever had this dish will beg for the recipe. Okay, if this dish is so amazing and it means so much to me, then what took me so long to show this recipe to you? Because originally I was hoping to keep it as my secret recipe because in case my husband's gonna abandon me sometime, you know, then I can make it and sell it to support my own living and and my kids and all that. But because of all the things going on in the world, I decided, you know what? I'm going to share this love with you. So hopefully I can bring comfort to you and your family as well. Are you ready? Now let's get started. Okay, so first thing ingredient is the Taiwanese rice wine, and if you can't find this Taiwanese rice wine without salt in there, you can totally use a Japanese dry sake as a substitute. That's totally fine. And this is optional. This is Taiwanese Shaoxing wine, and you can use a marsala to substitute, but or just leave it. You don't have to have it. And then the oyster sauce. Nowadays, you can even find it、um, at Costco. And this is the soy sauce that I use. And as you know, braising is all about the soy sauce. So if you want to know which soy sauce and where we can get this, I'll include the link below. Star anise and ginger. And carrots, tomatoes. If you can find heirloom tomato, that's great. If you don't, then any tomatoes, two of them, two to three of them, could work. Depends on how big it is. And、um, I always like to use different varieties. That gives different flavor profile, so make the dish taste, you know,、um, more depth. And then、uh, one to one and a half of the onions. And let's talk about the beef. What I use is the beef shank. I know most people don't relate beef shank as tender and juicy texture, but you just have to trust me with this, because everyone who's had this dish come back and ask me what part of the beef that I use. It's the beef shank. When I tell them it's the beef shank, everyone is like, "What? That's right, people. You have to trust me with this." So the shank like this, from the front and the back, we're just gonna cut it about how many? Like two inches. We want big chunk, and then we, and the end. It's also about two inches, and then in the middle because it's wider. So I like to cut in half lengthwise, so it's not as big, but still, we're gonna cut every two inches or so. We want a big chunk. Like this, and we're gonna blanch them first before we cook them. And then we're gonna add water to cover the beef. Turn the heat on to high to bring to a boil. While we're waiting the beef to boil, we're gonna start prepping. 
So we're gonna cut one and a half onion into big chunk because eventually it's all gonna be melted into the sauce. And then we're gonna do the tomatoes. My mom used to peel the tomatoes before she cut them, but then uh, because she wanted to look pretty, the sauce doesn't have like the tomato skins on top. But then I feel like, you know, nowadays we know the skin has a lot of nutrients, so I don't want to um, peel the skin, so I keep them on. But then if you like my mom, then you can quickly blanch it for like a few seconds, and then the skin will come right off. Again, just big chunk. It doesn't matter because it will become the sauce. A few slices of ginger. We're gonna prepare the carrot later because the carrot is not gonna be put in until the last 30 minutes of the cooking process. So we can get the cooking started first and then while we're waiting, we can prepare the carrot so we can save some time. As you can see, it's boiling, and then look at this. It's a lot of impurities, and that's why we're doing this. And with about, this is about 10 minutes now, and of course, the beef shank is totally not cooked. It's super hard. It's still gonna take a long time, like one and a half hours, for it to be tender and juicy. So now we turn the heat off. We're gonna rinse it under water to rinse off all of these impurities. Dump the water. And then let cold water rinse off the impurities. You don't want to put your hands in there right now because it's super hot. I really care about these impurities, so I really will go through each one of them and make sure I rub them off. So my sauce can be beautiful and clear, not cloudy. Now I put on my aprons, we're gonna start cooking. So about two to three tablespoons, depends on which pot and pans you're gonna use for your uh, stew. You wanna cover the bottom with oil and turn on the heat. And first you put in the onions. You don't have to wait until the uh, oil is hot, you can just put it in. But then we do wanna sweat it and when it looks transparent, then we put in the tomatoes. Okay, it's been like two, three minutes or so. As you can see, it's all uh, looking transparent and some part is a little golden brown, not a lot. Um, this is the perfect timing that you just wanna put in your tomatoes. You don't have to saute until the tomato is mushy. You basically just wanna make sure the tomato um, kind of got a touch with the hot oil so that the fragrance would come out. So just kind of stir it around for like a minute. Okay, now it's time to put in the beef. I don't like to dump it in because I don't want the, you know, there's always some water underneath. I don't want it to get into um, the pot because we're not putting any drop of water into the stew. Give it a little stir. Now we're gonna put in the ginger and the star anise and all the liquid. Taiwanese rice wine, Shaoxing rice wine, soy sauce, and oyster sauce. Now give it another stir. Make sure the oyster sauce is dissolved in there. Well, you have to know, when I learned this from my mom, it was never measured because no Asian cooks will measure things out. It's always about a dash of this, a little bit of that, and you look at the color and you decide if it's the right amount of proportion of all the seasoning, right? So it's always, my mom's like, look at the color. Do you need more soy sauce? Do you need more rice wine? I'm like, mm, you know, so you're lucky because I measure it out for you. And it's a pretty good measurement, I have to say. I've tried it several times and it's spot on. But no matter what, as a good cook, always taste it, okay? Before you seal the deal. 
spot on. Let's cover the lid and let it simmer for one hour and then we're gonna put in the carrot and cook for another 30 minutes. Now the beef stew is cooking, we're gonna prep the carrot. I don't cut my carrot like this, I cut my carrot like this. Why? Because you expose more surface than it absorbs more flavor. Does that make sense? So what I do is I cut and then there's the surface and I, I roll it around and then I cut. This way, look, I create two big surfaces to absorb the flavor. And I just keep doing that. Roll and cut and roll and cut, roll, cut, roll, cut. If you start from the head and then you will have a chance to have like a bigger chunks in the beginning and then the end you have smaller chunks so they're not more uniform. So I start from the thinner, the bottom, so that I can have uniform cut. Now it's been an hour and the house smells amazing. It smells like my mom's kitchen. Let's check it out. And we're gonna put in the carrots and cook for another 30 minutes. Oh, look at this. Now because I use the La Cruce stew and braised pan, so they seal the water and the liquid really well, so you can see that I'm not missing or losing any sauce. So it's very um, full of liquid, yummy sauce. Now we're gonna put the carrot in. Give it a little stir. To, so that the carrot can be cooked, you know, in the sauce. Now let's see, the beef is easily poked through, so it's tender now, but with 30 more minutes, it will get the color even better and even more soft and juicy, and the carrot will be very flavorful too. But before you cover it up, try it one more time, the taste of it, just to make sure. Oh yeah, it's really good. Let's cover it up and let it simmer for another 30 minutes. Okay. So we cooked the beef stew for an hour and then we put in carrots and then we cooked for another half hour. So it's been one hour and 30 minutes in total and it's ready. But do you know what's the best? You know, any braised or stew, if you can, make it earlier in the day and then you turn the heat off and let it sit for as long as you can. Like, a couple hours and then heat it back up when you need to eat. That will make the flavor goes into all the ingredients the best. But today, as you can see, it's already getting dark, so I don't think my kids want to wait another three, four hours before they eat it, right? So we're gonna just dig in and it's okay, it's still gonna taste amazing. And the leftover tomorrow is gonna be even better. All right, let's just open the lid and take a look. Ooh la la! Oh gosh, it smells so good. At this stage, you can totally, if you want the sauce to be thicker and less, then you can totally turn the heat up and just thicken it right here. But because we like to eat it with the rice, so I like the sauce, because it will go really well with the rice, right? Okay, I can't wait, I have to try it. And look, I already have some rice in there. Now I have to try the meat. Mm. Oh my gosh, this made me want to cry because I really, really miss my parents, my mom. Because you know the pandemic, we haven't seen them for like a long, long time, right? And this brings me back to when I was like in middle school. And I tell you, when we were in middle school in Taiwan, we went to school, we went into school at 7 a.m. and then we don't go home until 9 p.m. in the evening. And in between, it's just class, class, drill, drill, test and test, okay, nonstop. And when you come home, you're like exhausted and you're done for the day, you just, have nothing left in you anymore, you know? And then you open the door and you smell this beef stew and you eat this as your late night supper and all of a sudden, your soul comes back to your body again. You have soul again, right? This dish really means a lot to me and it's amazingly delicious. And I really hope you give it a try because this is now from my mom's kitchen to my kitchen and hopefully to yours.
Now if you like this video or the recipe, please remember to like and subscribe and turn on the little bell for notification whenever we have a new video coming out. And most importantly, please remember to share the love and share it with your friends. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.